you have to understand in the Hebrew because the Hebrew says such and such. Well, here it says Lifne, Lifne Yahweh, right? Lifne Yahweh, that means before the Lord or before Yahweh. So let's go back to the other verse and let's see what it says right here in this particular other verse, the particular verse on Nimrod that is used, just to make sure that there's no little hidden something there. It basically says, Lifne Yahweh. Isn't this something? Lifne Yahweh. Hmm. So what is the difference between Abraham being before the Lord, walking and standing and praying and ministering and blessing before the Lord and Moses before the Lord and Namrud before the Lord? You see, in the Sodom verse, it says they were wicked and sinners before the Lord. It describes them. Being a hunter, how can being a hunter, per se, be a sin sinner? Uh, being a hunter is not a sinner. The Lord says in this prophetic book, he will send hunters to hunt for his people and, and, and shepherds, fishers and fishers and hunters, he says, after his people. In fact, the shepherd is a type of a hunter. You see what I'm saying? Because if a shepherd's sheep are lost, he has to go hunt for them, and he may come across crazy, wild, and bestial animals that he will have to subdue or maybe even kill. You understand? But the phrase in the Hebrew, Lifne Yahweh, is both the same in Nimrod, Namrud's case, as well as in Abraham's case, as well as in Musa's case, as well as in others' case throughout the Bible. And there's no qualifier there in Namrud or Nimrod's case that makes Nimrod worse or an evil guy and Abraham who is before the Lord, Lifne Yahweh, or Musa who is Lifne Yahweh before the Lord. See, this is very interesting. And later on, we'll go into some exact detail where we actually show you from their records and documentation how they try to twist, you understand, the twist you know what I'm saying? Twist the word. You understand? Because behind it all is a reptilian agenda, but the reptilians are using, you understand, the cursed genetically. You understand? Flipping their inferiority into a false sense of superiority and backing them up with a cultic, hyperdimensional, you understand, reptilian power. And this is one of the reasons why even Jesus Christ said that he is the prince of this world. You understand? The prince of this world and the god of this world is Satan. Because the god of this world system, you understand, is the devil or the reptilian. But Nimrod, he was a mighty, you understand, a mighty hunter. You understand? Or Gibor. He was a mighty Gibor. You understand? Hua, Hua, Haya, Gibor. You understand? He was a mighty hunter. You understand? A mighty hunter. And he uses the word uh, Sayyid. Sayyid. Just like we say Sayyid in Arabic. Arabic says Sayyid. And he was a, he was a Gibor Sayyid. Lifne Yahweh. Lifne Yahweh. Hu Haya Hu Haya Gibor Sayyid Lifne Yahweh. The very same Lifne Yahweh that is used in 10 9 for Musa or 10 9, excuse me, for, 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 for Nimrod is used as well for Abraham, is used as well for. Musa. But if you believe the lion Jew, then what you should believe is that he's lying to you. And that's exactly what we find with this racist, this hyper racist mythology. You get a lot of people nowadays that talk about, oh, New World Order, Tower of Babel, and it all began with Nimrod. These idiots don't know what they're talking about. These straight up idiots don't know what they're talking about. It didn't all start with 
and you know, it didn't start with Nimrod. Nimrod was one who was a mighty hunter, a Gibor Said, you understand, who was faithful to Yahweh, who was a Gibor Said on behalf of the supremacy of God against the reptilians. It was Asher that fled out of that land and worked on behalf of the magicians or the demon people, the, the Chaldeans. And the Bible basically explains that. And later on, they made their way into Egypt. You see what I'm saying? And it was the Assyrians who persecuted the Israelites, not the native Egyptians. The native Egyptians welcomed in the Israelites and recognized the Israelites as spiritual brothers. But when the Assyrians became nationalized as Egyptians and their spies and others who was working on behalf of their agenda, which is the reptilian agenda, they persecuted the people of God. They persecuted the Hebrews, the Israelites. And that's when the Israelites under Musa recognized, we got to take these secrets, we got to re-encode them, you know what I'm saying? In the scriptures, I got to get my Ethiopian wife and my brothers and sisters and the faithful Egyptians too, the mixed multitude, and we got to get out of here. We got to hightail it out of here. And that's basically the real story. So when a lot of these people say that Moses stole this, they are still following the lion Jew. You understand? And we're saying this because the Bible says this. You see, the Bible is the one who says, I know people talk about hate crimes and hate speech. Hate speech. What about Nimrod? The lie against Nimrod. Blaming Nimrod for, for being an enemy, an adversary of Yahweh, an adversary of the true God, and demonizing this black man, Nimrod. That's hate speech. Claiming that black people are cursed and being black because of the mythological lie of a curse on Ham, that's hate speech. So what is hate speech? All those lies and perversions of God's word against any obvious good black person. You know, so I could show you Torahs of the Jews and their footnotes where they talk about the Egyptians being ugly and black. That's hate speech. The the lie of the curse of Ham. It's, it's a lie because Ham wasn't cursed. But how they have used this curse of Ham to justify slavery, to justify persecution, to justify genocide of black people and enslavement of black people, that's hate speech right there. This lie now, a lot of these, um, these uh, conspiracy Theorists, and I, I'm gonna call them a theorist because they're still theorists. As long as they're going back to that to that hate speech of the non-ethnic Jews, who have lied against a great Ethiopian, a great Kushite, Nimrod, a great reptilian hunter and liquidator. You understand? That was the original mission, and we're clear on that from the scriptures. You see what I'm saying? This is why throughout time they had to flip it. It's called projection. You see what I'm saying? It's called projection. And we've seen the European white people do this a lot. They're the ones doing this thing, and they'll make it seem as though the other person is doing this thing. Just like what they did with the Boston Tea Party. It was them who was defying England, their mother being the original motherfucker. They were defying their own mother. What they do, they flipped it. They basically put on Indian garments to make it seem like it was the Indians doing it. You see, we see this throughout history. You understand? His story.